What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So I wanted to make a video today talking a little bit about the functions of the Rotate tool within SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I think the Rotate tool is one of the tools that trips up beginners a little bit, but I also think there's some valuable things that SketchUp uh, longtime users should also know about. So I just kind of wanted to go through some of those functions. So if you're, if you're a veteran SketchUp user, still stick around. There's going to be some things I think you're going to learn as well, but this is also a great kind of overview for beginners. So the Rotate tool is a tool that's found either in the large tool set off to the left or at the top of the page. And you can also activate it using the Q key on your keyboard. And you can see how when I activate the rotate tool, I get this kind of circular protractor looking thing. So the circular protractor looking thing is indicating to us what axis things are going to be rotated along. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk through the process of using this tool. Um, so the rotate tool and the move tool are a little bit unique in the way that they function. And the way that they function is you select an object and then you have to set a base point or a reference point before you do anything else. So let's say for example that I wanted to rotate this box and if you think about it conceptually, when you decide if you're going to rotate this box and you're, you decide how you're going to rotate it, you need a point around which you're going to rotate it. So that's the first click or the first thing you set is your base point. And so the way that this works is you select an object, then you activate the tool by tapping the Q key or clicking on one of these icons. And you can see how what this, done, what this does is this pops up this protractor like we talked about before. And the protractor is showing what plane you're going to rotate along. So like for example, if we were to rotate this along the red plane, then this object would rotate up and down like this. If we were to rotate along the blue plane, the object would rotate along this flat plane in a circle like this. So the way that we set that direction is going to be very important. And as you move your mouse over these different faces, you can see what's happening is this is trying to inference to those different faces to figure out where you might want to rotate this along. And you can see how this does this on the different faces on the sphere as well. So this is just SketchUp trying to guess and help you out. So the easiest way to work with the rotate tool when you're setting your reference plane that you're going to rotate along is to tap one of the arrow keys. So you activate the tool by tapping the Q key, and then if you tap the different arrow keys, you see how this is locking to the different axes as, as I tap the different directions? So then it's not really inferencing anymore or trying to figure out what face you're along. I've already told it. In this case, I want to rotate along the blue axis by tapping the up arrow key. So if I wanted to rotate along the green axis, I'd tap left. If I wanted to rotate along the red axis, I'd tap right. So now we've set our reference plane, and in this case, let's say that we want to take this object and we want to rotate it while keeping it flat in this direction. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to single click to set a base point, and the base point is the reference point around which you're going to rotate. So in this case, for example, if I was to click on this corner, then we would rotate around this corner. So you can see how I single clicked and I set this base point. Well now, you can see that as I move my mouse around, nothing's really happening, and that's because SketchUp is waiting for input from us on what we want to rotate. So we have an object selected that we want to rotate around this point, and now SketchUp is asking us for a reference point, or I also call this a target point. And that's the point along which you're going to rotate different things. And what this allows you to do is be very precise with your rotations. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to rotate this box, we would set our base point, and then we would click again to set our target point. And you can see how once I've set my target point, this object is going to rotate around in a circle. And so now I can move my mouse in order to set this. So my third click is going to be my final point. So when I click on this, this is going to finalize my rotation. So it's a three-click process. You activate your tool and select an object. Then you activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key. It's optional to lock to an axis, but I've gone ahead and done that by tapping the up arrow on my keyboard. And then I set a base point. That's my first click. I set a target point, which is my second click. Then I set my final point, which is my third click. 
And so let's say, for example, that you wanted to rotate this up and down, we would do the same thing. We would select the object, tap the Q key, and then we would tap the right arrow key to lock this to the red axis. And then in this case, I'm going to set a different base point. I'm going to set this upper right corner of my box. So now if I click on this, I've set my base point. Now I click on, I click again to set my target. And I click a third time to set my final point. So it's pretty much always going to be a three click process. And you'll notice that when you do this, you can also inference to different angles. So for example, if I was to pick, this as my corner point again, and I click and move my mouse, you'll notice how when I hit 90 degrees and I'm on the green axis, I'm getting a green inference. This is SketchUp telling you, okay, you've rotated this, and if you rotate it to this point, then this line that we've drawn right here is going to be along the green axis. If I move my mouse this way, you can see how it shows us that it's going to be along the red axis. You can also use this to align things to other things in your model. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to align this to my inside shoe right here instead of to an axis. You can see I'm able to move my mouse and do that as well. And then the other thing you can do when you're rotating objects with the rotate tool is you can also be precise with the way that you're rotating them. And what that means is instead of clicking, so let's say I set a base point of this corner, single click, and I click again. Instead of clicking, if I was to type in a value like 45 degrees, you can see how you can rotate this object precisely around a certain or along a certain angle. So I could do this again, I would set a base point, I would set a target point, and then let's say I wanted to rotate this another 30 degrees, I could just type in 30. So now I moved this 45 degrees, and then I moved it 30 more degrees. So I moved it 75 degrees from this axis to over here. So that can be very valuable for trying to do precise rotations. So another thing that I think tricks people or trips people up when they're trying to work with the rotate tool is they don't realize that they can also set this base point off of the object. So let's say, for example, I was to align this box using the move tool on the red axis, just so that we're kind of precise here. Not only can I activate the rotate tool and set a base point right here and rotate the object in place, I can also activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key and set a base point that's off of this object. So you can see how I can click on the origin, which is the point where the axes intersect. And then I can come out here and click on the corner of a box, and I can rotate this. So you can see how you can rotate things along a radius without actually clicking on the object. And all the same rules apply. So if I click again, it's going to set my final point. Or if I run the tool and I type in a value, like 45, and hit the enter key, it's going to rotate this 45 degrees along an axis. This works for multiple objects too. So let's say for example that I wanted to rotate both the sphere and the cube. I could select them both, activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key, and then click on the origin. That sets my base point. I could click again on the corner of this square to set a target point, and then I could move my mouse in order to rotate this. And this works in the same way where if you wanted to do this along the red axis, you could just, when you first activate the tool, tap the right or left arrow key. So we'll do it along the green axis. We'll tap the left arrow key, click on the origin, and then we'll click out here somewhere to set a target point. You can see how you can rotate things up and down by doing this. So this gives you a lot of different options for ways that you can rotate objects within SketchUp. And I could also, like for example, let's say I wanted to rotate this sphere around this cube. I could actually use the center of the cube as a base point. So I would select my sphere, tap the Q key in order to activate this tool, and then I would use inferencing. So just moving my mouse over these points to find the center of the cube. And then once I click, you can see how I've set a base point along the blue axis on top of this cube. Now I can move my mouse out and click, and I can actually rotate this around this object. So this can be useful for things like rotating objects around the center. So another quick way to do this without having to activate the rotate tool is if your geometry is in a group. So if you've selected it all, right-clicked, and clicked Make Group, and you activate the Move tool, 
you can see how as you move your mouse over these different faces, you get these little red crosses. Well, what these red crosses do is they allow you to click on them. And again, single click. Don't, don't click and drag. But they allow you to click on them and then move your mouse and click again in order to rotate an object. So sometimes you don't even need to activate the rotate tool in order to do this. And then the last function of the rotate tool that I want to talk about is the ability to create arrays. And so some of you may know that the rotate tool and the move tool have the ability to create multiple copies of objects as well as the objects themselves. So for example, let's say that I wanted to create a copy of this cube at 45 degree increments around a circle. You can do that using the rotate tool. And you activate it the same way that you did before. So you drag across it tap that Q key to activate the rotate tool, and then single click in order to set your base point. Now we're gonna click on this corner to set our target point. So, so far nothing has changed, but what's gonna change is if you tap the control key with this tool active, you can see how instead of moving your base object, this actually creates a copy along this angle. And you can see how I could either click here or I could type in a value of 45 degrees to create a copy at 45 degrees from the original. So that by itself is very valuable. I can create a copy at 45 degrees. Do not click again because the next thing we can do is create multiple copies. And the way creating multiple copies works is once you've done this, if you don't click on anything else and you leave the tool active, you can actually type in times. In this case, that's the star key on my keyboard. And then you can type in a number of values. So in this case, if I was to type in a value like seven, and hit the enter key, this would create seven copies along that spacing that we set. And this is still active, so I can adjust the number of copies again, as long as I don't go click on anything else. So if I type in times four and hit the enter key, then this will create four copies. If I type in times seven and hit the enter key, this will go back to seven copies. This works as long as that tool is active and you haven't clicked anywhere else or tapped anything else on your keyboard. Like as soon as I tap the space bar on my keyboard, that takes me out of the tool. And now if I try to type something in like times nine, it doesn't work. So this can be really valuable for creating copies of objects around a point. And not only can you do this this way, you can also create copies using the divide tool or the divide key. So let's say for example that I wanted to create copies of the sphere that go along the red axis to the blue axis. I could activate the rotate tool Tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. Single click. Move my mouse out here somewhere to create a base point and click. And you can see how this isn't creating a copy yet until we tap the control key. But if you tap the control key, this creates the copy. So you could set this one right here. And then you could type in divided by and a number of copies. So in this case, I could say divided by seven and that would create seven equally spaced copies between this object and this object. So you can use this to space different things out and it works the same way. So if I type in divided by four and hit the enter key, this goes down to four objects. If I type in divided by five, it's gonna add one. So you can keep moving this around as long as you don't click inside your model to take you outside of the tool. So this can be really valuable for a lot of different things within SketchUp. So one last example is let's say I wanted to create kind of a almost a rainbow of spheres, I would just select my object, activate the rotate tool, lock my protractor to the green axis by tapping the left arrow key, single click on the center, move my mouse out and set my target point, tap the control key to activate copy mode, and then I would click. So that creates that one copy at 180 degrees. And then I would type in something like divided by 10. That would allow me to create 10 equally spaced copies between this point and this point. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you have any questions about using the rotate tool? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.